Hello, everyone. Welcome to IP Day Webinar Wednesday. Today's focus is integrated education and braided funding. With me today is Yolanda Flores and Ariel Pachokas from Collier County. They're going to share how they secured funding for their integrated education and training programs. You will hear how they used braided funding, which includes private, state, and federal funds to provide quality workforce training to adult education students. Before we get started, I'm just going to remind you of a few things to remember. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the Q&A option that's on your Zoom control. Enter the questions throughout the presentation and we'll be answering them throughout. Also, your attendee microphones are muted, so you are in listen-only mode. Today's presentation is being recorded and it will be archived and available on the IPDE website within 48 hours. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Yolanda and Ariel and thank them very much for this presentation today. Yolanda, Ariel. Thank you, June. And thank you so much for everyone out there who decided to join us today to talk about one of my very favorite subjects, and that's money. And anyone that has worked with me here in Collier County, when they ask uh, something about Yolanda, they'll say, oh, she knows how to get the money. Um, and it's something that both Ariel and I have um, worked uh, very hard on. Uh, in case you didn't know, for those of you that know us out there, Ariel and I have been working together for almost 20 years in a variety of different roles. But just another, a little bit more background information about me. I have over 30 years of experience working in workforce education. That's how old I am, very old. So uh, a lot of my time has been spent on securing funding. So I have experience going back to CETA, the Farm Workers Program, JTPA, WIA, WIOA, as well as a lot of private uh, donations and funding. Uh, Ariel, would you like to talk a little bit about yourself? Sure, and so while I don't have uh, that many years, uh, and my background really started in K-12, I've been following and learning from Yolanda for the last, I want to say, uh, 15 years at least. And in those in that time, um, it's this is really all about thinking differently than we ever have before, always looking for those opportunities, knocking on all doors, um, and, and really showcasing and telling the story of what adult education is, what it's, it's intended to do. And it's, a, it's the key piece to really a strong workforce. Um, in many work businesses and entities business, entities don't know the leverage that we're able to provide and as we start sharing that's where the 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 resources often come in to support or at least if if the resources aren't, aren't there how do we advocate so that we can have additional resources and i think we're noticing that the state of florida is recognizing the workforce the work that we're doing in adult education and making those resources available. Now it falls to us to get a little bit more creative on how do we use it. Mm -hmm. And Ariel, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Adult education is that pipeline uh, to build a quality workforce. And a couple of years ago, Governor DeSantis charted that new course for Florida. And that's for Florida to become number one in the nation for workforce education by 2030. And there's been a lot of, a lot of initiatives around that these past few years to help us get there. So in case you haven't heard, there is the Get There Florida campaign which promotes the benefit of short-term high-value career and technical education programs. There were rapid credentialing funding that was given to the technical colleges that benefited also those short-term programs. And again, all these programs, high quality, and they're aligned with workforce demand. And it was through rapid credentialing that at that point, Ariel was doing work with IET, and we started exploring then, how could we use those rapid credentialing funds that the technical colleges received to work alongside and supporting our IET uh, programs? Um, Ariel, anything else you want to I, I think the biggest piece is, I think we're just starting to see, uh, we're starting to scratch the, uh, the surface of what the resources that are available are. Um, I, I, we, we already know there's going to be additional resources coming in in the near future. Um, and so um, 
let's jump in. Okay. So as part of um, Governor DeSantis' um, uh, goal of getting Florida to become number one, what that means is to increase the percentage of working age Floridians with a post-secondary certificate degree or industry certification to 60% by 2030. And you know, Florida cannot do that. They cannot become number one without adult education. Adult education, our students, our, our students are critical to that pipeline. And IET is a great opportunity to get students on that career pathway. Now, the Technical College and adult education here in Collier County have been working very closely together. And why? Because the technical colleges have a vested interest in those adult students. And the reason why they have that vested interest is because when the administration here at the technical college was looking at their data, they found out that depending on the time of the year, 25 to 30% of the students enrolled in a career and technical education program they had a prior adult education enrollment in their school history in Collier County. So when you know that 25 or 30% of your students are coming from adult education, as an institution, you have to be vested in helping that other organization in preparing those students for those successful transition into those full-time programs or to work side, alongside them in building those short-term training programs. So IET is a great way to strengthen the pipeline and helping Florida become number one in workforce education. And, and I think the biggest concern we've heard uh, across the state has been but how do we help these students transition? How do we find the resources? How do we pay for those classes? Um, and, and, and the IET is that, is that aspect. Mm -hmm. So um, before we get uh, to really talk about the funding, think about this and the opportunity that exists right now. 11.5% of Floridians ages 25 and older lack a high school diploma. That's over 280,000 adults. Now think about all those students between the ages of 16 and 24 that also lack that high school diploma. What an opportunity to target those individuals and bring them in to our IET programs. Also, 29.4% of Floridians ages five and older live in a home where a language other than English is spoken. That's over 1,800,000 Floridians that live in a home where language other than English is spoken. Even if you only took a third of those students, we have plenty of students out there that we could be bringing into these um, IET programs. And, 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 and very important to recognize here, with the current workforce shortage that exists across the country, the target audience are the ones what we're seeing right here, right now, target audience are the adult learners and how are we going to prepare them how what are we going to do differently to get them into those current voids that exist so that they can better support our local uh, our economy mm -hmm. IET is really not new if you've been in education long enough like I have you have seen it in different variations including vocational English for speakers of other languages also, back in 1997, when I first came to Collier County, I was hired to start up the Farm Worker Program, which was a WIA funded program at the time. And during my time with uh, that program, I did an intro to the trades program where I had an ESOL instructor working alongside individuals from the trades, construction, electrical, masonry. And they built a curriculum where the ESOL instructor was working alongside the trades instructor in delivering instruction to farm workers. It was short-term training to get them from the fields into entry-level positions in the construction world. Shortly after that, 
I received funding from WIOA for out of school youth. And it was through that program that I built a um, working with GED students, out of young students that have dropped out of school. And we set up a CTE wheel program combined with reading, math, language while they were working on their GED. So the students, not only by the end, the goal was for them to attain their GED, but along the way, they did a wheel program. And so they left with their private security certificate, their early childhood 45 hour certificate and an office assistant certificate. It exposed them to a variety of careers and also got them some industry certs while they were working on their GED. So coming back to IET, in leveraging resources, you have to have an understanding of what are the needs of the students when they're participating in your IET. So what resources do you need in order for uh, tuition? It could be for advising. Uh, it could be to help students set the career goals. If you have some students with disabilities, who can help you with that? If there's needs with childcare, with technology, um, career exploration, transportation, employment, et cetera, right? And you need to look at your students and really have an understanding who your students are and what are their needs and then what resources do you need to leverage based on those needs. And, and so here, here, here we're looking at, we have a couple of images, but uh, at the top right corner, we see our one of our partners of Conditioned Air where we're providing English classes with the HVAC component built in. Um, and in, in the in initiation of that, of that class was really focused on supporting the business to, better, to help prepare their uh, employees to better meet the needs of the organization and also of their, uh, of their clients. So in this example that um, Ariel mentioned, we're actually using the classroom space and the physical resources of the business partner, as well as the equipment that is needed for that. The laptops we brought in from school and um, we use them as we need them there, but the actual physical space and any uh, uh, resources that we need reference to HVAC, we use the company's resources in that case. And, and then, th then this opens up an opportunity for a further conversation that often businesses don't realize or the or our community doesn't realize that we're serving those most in need. And as we're working with those most in need, they most often have long hours, multiple jobs, uh, family life, the adult learner gets in the mix. And how are we going to leverage the time that they need for that commitment to really take advantage? And so oftentimes it's helping those entities understand uh, the life of the adult learner and we need to give somewhere to be able to keep them moving forward. You wanna talk about the picture at the bottom, right? Sure, so then we also were talking about pathways. And as we, as we start working with our adult learners, it's also about visiting and exploring the different paths and, and, and providing that advisement that our students need. Um, our, the majority of our students in, in the state of Florida are coming from other countries where a nurse is a nurse is a nurse. But in here in the US, we've got nursing assistants, we have uh, practical nursing, we have registered nurses, and then that's not even getting into the whole medical assisting and surge tech and uh, countless other nurse, nursing fields. And so really it's about having helping our students understand the different pathways, what is a pathway, and how do we get to that end goal, whatever that end goal is, and that it can vary from individual to individual depending on their goals and on their needs. So that bottom picture at the bottom corner is a group of our adult learners as they're visiting a, a local university here in Southwest Florida. And besides that university, we went to our college and we went to our technical colleges and really exploring all the different paths and opportunities that exist for them. Mm -hmm. So in essence, those are resources. They may not be actual money given to, 
but their resources used to support those student needs, which is critical to our IET programs. So now let's dig a little bit deeper into graded funding and what is graded funding, right? Braided funding refers to the weaving together of federal, state, and private funding streams to support programs such as integrated education and training. What that looks like, you as an institution have to be creative depending on what resources you have, because it is very different from a functioning in a rural community. And trust me, I'm familiar with rural communities. I grew up in Hardy County here in Florida. So I know the challenges that come with that. And then also when you're living in a metropolitan area such as Orange County or Miami-Dade, that's different. And then here we are in Collier County, which is a medium-sized community. All our resources are different, but number one, you have to be creative. You have to identify what are those potential funding streams for you, for you. And then next, you have to advocate for your programs, inform the community of all the good work that you're doing. And I think along those lines, you're also looking for those untapped opportunities that exist and uh, uh, leveraging the awareness so that we can find additional funding streams. All right, um, and at this point, let me take a break and make sure that there are no questions before I move on and talk a little bit more about funding partners. We're good? We're good, so far so good. Okay, so now we're going to dig a little bit deeper in terms of how we have sought out our civic organizations, our foundations, and also of course government, which includes schools and grants and how we've leveraged some of those resources. So let's start with the first one, which is um, our foundations. And so here in our area, we did a lot of work working with the Greater, um, Nap or Greater Naples Chamber of Commerce, and they have leadership groups that they sponsor every year. And so working with Mike Dalby, who's the executive director, we were able to convince them to have education day that would be hosted here on the campus of Lorenzo Walker. And so every time he brings groups through, there's probably about 40, 50 people in a group and both Ariel with adult education and me representing the CTE side have an opportunity to do presentations to those individuals coming through. And it was then through those presentations that we started building relationships with foundations that existed, right? And so we've been able to build relationships with Moorings Park. Moorings Park is an assisted living facility in our area. And they have a vested interest in helping train individuals or finding workers for their facility. So through our relationship every year, they provide $25,000 to provide uh, support to specific programs. And of course, many of them are in the healthcare field, but also HVAC. So when you think in terms of our intro to HVAC program, we're able to use these funds. When you talk about our uh, nursing assistant IET program, we can use funds from the Moorings Park. We also use those funds to provide support to our full-time CTE programs. But Moorings Park, to them, it doesn't make a difference whether our students are in our full-time CTE programs or in our IET programs. So that's the way we're, we're using the Moorings Park. So using that, we can buy uh, uniforms for the students, we can buy their textbooks, we can buy supplies to pay for, and if it's being run in, as a CTE program, then we can pay for the tuition and lab fees on behalf of the student. In the case of our um, intro to HVAC, we could use those funds as well for that or to pay for the instructor since our intro to HVAC is not being run as a CTE program. 
We also establish a relationship with Future Makers Coalition and Future Makers Coalition, which is funded out of the Southwest Florida Community Foundation, not only supports our schools here in Collier County, but they also support Hendry County and Charlotte uh, County, and they give funding for gap funding or emergency needs. So any needs that we identify as emergency or gap or um, uniforms, books, et cetera, we can also use those funds. Finally, or, or not finally, but then the Richard M. Schultz Foundation, a few years ago, gave us $150,000 to start up short-term IT programs, technology programs, right? And it was through there then that we started building an IET program in IT. Uh, the Community Foundation gives us funding uh, to do an electronics program. Currently, that's not an IET program, but we're looking to develop that. And we have the Greater Kansas City Foundation. And you're saying, Kansas City, what are they doing giving funding to our, an organization in uh, Naples, Florida? It just happens to be that uh, the individuals that give that funding, they winter here in Florida and they came through one of these leadership presentations and they heard about the good work that they were doing, we were doing here, and they gave us fun funding. And then, of course, the Na Daniel May Foundation. But so I want you to take a few minutes uh, before I turn it on over to Ariel. And in the chat box, think about a foundation, whether it's a local foundation, whether it's a national or a state foundation that you are aware of that you might want to be able to reach out right? You have to start with brainstorming. So is there one off of the top of your head that you might say, you know what, I've heard about that foundation. I haven't reached out to them, but you know what, I might be reaching out to them just um, and, and, and start exploring because you don't know what you don't know until you start talking to people. So we'd like to see some uh, responses in the chat if you have any ideas of some foundations in your area. But remember, when you're talking to foundations, always let them know, communicate what adult education is all about and its impact on the community. And you have to think of it about as if you were a business. What is your program's return on investment, right? What is it that adult education do for the community. And this is really where IET has positioned adult education in a real strategic place um, because it's no longer just language uh, instruction or reading and math and literacy, but really now it's creating that strong workforce where there's a gap in, in, in a shortage in staffing uh, across the board from, from the hospitality industry and the restaurant industry to to the banks and, and critical businesses such as hospitals, we're the, we're, the, we're the first line of defense to help create and, and provide that strong workforce, but we can't do it without a, the support from our whole community. And so I think this is really uh, given adult education an opportunity to repackage and create a, a new image of what it is we really do and showcase. But Yolanda, I think the common question I always hear well, this isn't where the rest of other districts are not like Collier County, where there's lots of money and, and resources there. And I, and I think what, what we don't tell the story well is this hasn't happened overnight. No. Um, this has been a, a project 12 for- 12 years in the making? Yes, 12 years. And <laughs> 12 years in having opportunities to sit in front or stand in front of or people walking through the building or going out to our, our, our local uh, partners in our community and just tell the story of what we do. Right, and Ariel, you're exactly right. People uh, say you're different in Collier County. However, I know that one thing that most of our communities have in common is that we have civic or nonprofit organizations, right? Even the smallest communities out there I've seen either a Kiwanis or a Rotary or Alliance. So before I get uh, started too far along this slide, um, I know the foundations one was probably a difficult one and we didn't see responses. Can we start getting some chats there in the box of what civic organizations do you have in your area 
or nonprofits that you might want to do a presentation about your IET programs. So we should start seeing some responses, hopefully, um, of some of these organizations in your area. And while those come in, let me continue in terms of the work that we've done with civic organizations in Collier County. Again, whether it's your Rotary, your Lions, your Kiwanis, et cetera, they usually have a speaker chair, someone that's looking for individuals to come in and talk to them about whatever they're offering. So Ariel and I, we've been on the, we made our rounds from Rotary to Kiwanis to Lions to the Wings, et cetera, to let them know whether it's about the technical college and the programs, whether it's about adult education, uh, whether it's uh, whatever it is that they want us to speak about, we'll frame it. And we always make sure that we talk about our program's impact on the community and the return on the investment. You have to think about it as a business. So the picture that you see here on the screen that's the Rotary Club of Naples Bay. And what the Rotary Club of Naples Bay did is they supported our IET um, culinary program. They hosted a Caribbean culinary caper event where they, of course, all their members and whoever else, they sold tickets to the event, they raised funds. And the funds then were used to purchase the chef jackets for our students, their aprons, basic kitchen tools for the students. Now here, I'm gonna talk a little bit about grading funding. So those things came from the Rotary Club. Then Lorenzo Walker Technical College gave the use of the kitchen space to the adult education IET culinary program. And then they donated ingredients from their production shop, because they run a production shop and they make money off of that. They donated those ingredients then to the IET so that the IET program didn't have to purchase uh, ingredients as students are learning. Then the teacher, uh, Chris, who's right in the center, she is an adult education teacher for many years who also has a culinary degree from Johnson and Wells, I think it is. So she was, this was one teacher conducting the IET. This particular Rotary Club also has a sneaker program. And so they also offered to purchase closed toe shoes for any of the culinary IET students if they needed one. Anything else to say about that particular group, Ariel? Well, I... I... It, it ultimately, it, it, and with this particular group, I think you summed it up. It was a collab, a, a, a pulling of a creative pulling of different resources and entities to make the program come together with the ultimate goal of student success uh, and transitioning those students into either the the hospitality industry or into technical training programs. Um, I, I and I think a piece of that's critical here to also mention is that these conversations are never ending, they have to be reoccurring. Our foot, uh, the Florida, uh, Florida is continuously bringing new individuals down. And, and you can see there's not one Rotary Club in Naples, but there's about 15 different Rotary Clubs in Naples. Right. And each one of those is a different potential funding stream. Right, the Rotary Club of Naples that you see down at the bottom, which is different than the Rotary Club of Naples Bay, what they do for us is they'll fund individual students. So let's say we're running an IET program and we put a dollar amount that it costs per student to get them through the program. Then we'll request funds and they'll sponsor, they have an interview process We'll have help the students go through the process and then they'll fund an individual student. And on top of that, then they'll provide mentorship to the student as well. So it's a different type of support. And then we have the Rotary Club of Pelican Bay, another a third Rotary Club that funds by providing scholarship dollars to a program. Blanket check X amount of scholarships to X amount of students going into that particular program. 
So each one provides a different no, funding. Which now brings me to the wings, the women in Naples giving support. Most of you probably don't have a wings, but you may have who is the Red Hat Society ladies or something along those ways. So anyway, these are women in Naples giving support. And what these particular individuals did is they gave us a $5,000 check for us to use in whatever way we need it to support an IET program. So what can we do for that $5,000? With that $5,000, we can run an IET program, let's say at 150 hours, including time and pay for the instructor. So you see how we learn how to use the funds depending on what the organization is giving us creatively and different in order to support the IET programs. Now, thank you so much. I see things coming up on the chat in terms of any other organizations out there that and, we're not aware of. And one that I did not think about, but we I just came through the local sororities and fraternities with, with universities. And then along those lines, uh, think of uh, past um, uh, graduates of your program who are now in the industry giving back. Excellent. So. Sometimes when we talk with each other, that's when we can get the creative juices going and identified. I'm sure there's many more. Go out there to the internet and do a search, right? There might be others that we haven't even thought about. Next, think about your government resources, your school resources. We mentioned a lot about the partnership between adult education and Lorenzo Walker and how we support each other. In our area, we also have ITEC. There's Florida Gulf Coast University, Florida Southwestern. They also have a very a vested interest in what we do. We're fortunate that in Southwest Florida, we don't see any of the post-secondary institutions competing against each other. We're all working together to support our students. And we all have that common goal of getting students on a career pathway. Then we have our government funding such as the Department of Vocational Rehab. And I'm sure Ariel has some stories that he can share about some students that can provide funding for that individual student within your IET program that qualifies. Same thing with career source. In our area, they do have to be an individual student. However, career source also has a program in our area called Destination Graduation where they'll support some specific students um, to get them not only their GED, but help them with the job training. And some of those individuals are in our IET program. And, 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 and I'm, I, if you're listening to this uh, webinar right now, it's because you're in adult education. And if you're in adult education, you know what's driving all of this is WIOA. And WIOA requires us to be in partnerships with our local workforce development boards and vocational rehabilitation. Uh, and, and those are our main entities because that's the target population that we serve. Those are the, are the population most in need. And it is the, the workforce that is currently uh, needed to keep pushing, uh, moving Florida forward mm -hmm. and bringing industry down. So if you haven't started conversations with your post-secondary institutions, start those conversations, right? What, and you have to find out what services do they provide to your adult education students? And do they have num the data on the number of adult education students who transition into their school? If not, you might want to gather that information and educate them about the benefits of them investing in your adult education students to get them on that career pipeline. And I, and I know most of you already know, especially if you have, uh, as, as you're working on transitioning students and as they earn those those high school equivalency diplomas of which students then went on to those technical colleges or those state colleges because you helped them get to that end point. And so you can come in with a list of XYZ students and numbers to, to help prove the case of we're not competing, but we're supporting and enhancing. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have any questions before we move on to the next one? No, but I just saw here with the response of also, you know, hotels, trucking companies, car dealerships, anyone within connected within the industry, those are all possible resources as well. Excellent. And again, that goes along with identifying 
um, the industries in your area that are needing workforce, and then them helping you with equipment, supplies, possibly sponsoring students, sponsoring a class. And, I, and I, I would venture to guess that most of those industries had changes in staffing, if they're local in your area, that probably the new individuals that are in those seats doing the hiring or working and looking for those employees don't know that, uh, that your programs exist or the role that adult education has to serve better their community or support their interests. Yeah, before I get to talking about other funding opportunities, that also made me think about, you know, I know many times people in education say, it's, well, we're not into fundraising, but let me tell you, when I was a high school teacher and I was, and I was sponsoring clubs, I was into fundraising, right? Now I'm doing fundraising in other ways, but think about it this way. And I know I've heard it from other technical colleges throughout Florida that they sponsor where they sell tickets to a dinner and the thousands of dollars that they'll collect uh, in uh, by having a dinner and selling tickets. Now tie that back to that $5,000 donation from the wings. $5,000 can sponsor an IET class. So if you're looking to start small, start with one little goal. You do not have to be go big, set a goal, work, do some fundraising, and I know you can make it happen. With $5,000, you can get an IET program up and running. Now, if you wanna get big, go bigger, other than what we've already mentioned, there's been other funding opportunities. Earlier, I mentioned the rapid credentialing um, grant that the Department of Education put out. Also, they put out the Pathways to Career Opportunities Grant, and I just saw a notice come from the chancellor today that there's another round, I think, opening up for Pathways to Career Opportunities. In 2020, Lorenzo Walker Technical College applied and received funding to implement the HVACR pre-apprenticeship program. And the target population was adult education students. So in applying for that grant, we worked specifically with Ariel and his group of people and said, okay, we want to set up a pre-apprenticeship program because we already have an apprenticeship program that Lorenzo Walker was the sponsor for. Now we want to build that pipeline and our adult education students are a perfect um, candidate can mm -hmm. because there's no requirement. There's no employment requirement for that pre-apprenticeship program. The whole goal of that pre-apprenticeship program is to give a foundational skill, an awareness, and then create that pipeline, that direction into the workforce or into technical training. Right, so in this particular case, we wrote the grant. And so the end goal for that student is when they finish pre-apprenticeship, if they don't get picked up as a helper, let's say in the industry, uh, they can come into the full-time HVAC program, or if they do get picked up by the employer, the employer then can sponsor them in the HVAC apprenticeship program. So there's an opportunity there for those students to continue to build on that um, pathway into HVAC. And talk about what a great opportunity for IET to really develop and really focus and create the relevancy for the adult learner giving them purpose as they're working on their language skills or working on towards their GED or their basic skills, but allowing them to also move in a direction that they see an end goal and money coming in. Because at the end of the day, stu our students, as much as they wanna be lifelong learners, sarcasm, a little bit of sarcasm there, they're here because they wanna improve their lives. Mm -hmm. So we use this as a perfect opportunity because that first year is the hardest, investing those times or resources, buying the equipment that you need in order to get that program off the ground. So if you haven't applied for a pathway to career opportunities, if you're not a sponsor of an apprenticeship program, you might want to find out who does sponsor an apprenticeship program and work with them to write for a pre-apprenticeship program. In some areas, your technical colleges are sponsors. Sometimes it's- um, Local industry. Local industry, yep. And, and again, what is the, what's the talking point? What's the selling point? We wanna create a pipeline, a feeder for that apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, the technical colleges have uh, vouchers and there's ways that they can waive fees for any 
uh, student that is eligible in CTE programs. So again, you have to look at how are you running that IET program? Is it a CTE um, funded where you can do, use these vouchers or is it being run through your community education or community uh, continuing ed or adult ed? However, the big one that we have really taken advantage of is the open door grant. In 2021, Lorenzo Walker applied for, and we received more than uh, we had requested, but we received $1.5 million through the Open Door Grant. And we have really used these funds to implement and deliver IET programs by funding the student scholarships. So do you want to talk a little bit more about that, Ariel? So the... Uh, the uh... We're, the open door grant we're running yes. in conjunction with. So the 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 scholarship opportunities that we've been able to create, you know, we'll we'll start really simplistic and reference one that we just talked about earlier. So the the HVAC R uh, pre apprenticeship model in partnership with Conditioned Air or partnership with our our local biz, largest business uh, or employer in Collier County, which is Collier County Public Schools Maintenance Department, bring, bringing them. In. And so each one of those students is then tied to an adult, adult ed program, but at the same time working towards their uh, HVAC apprenticeship component. So as they're working in that common direction, we're able to leverage those dollars to be able to support and fund the two instructors that are needed to be able. And now remember, we're doing it in multiple sites, so we actually have more than two instructors, but to be able to support that class. And again, the funds are tied to scholarships for the students. We can't pay directly for the instructor from those, but think about it as a business. The scholarship funds then pay for the students. Those are actually revenue dollars. And then you use those revenue dollars to pay for the expense of running that program. Now, remember, if it is not a CTE program where you're getting appropriation dollars, in essence, you have overhead costs, just like a business does when offering a service. You have electrical, you have uh, the use of the building, you have custodial, you have teachers, you have you know, a variety of things. So what we decided to do is to run these programs using our community foundation side of the house. So if we build out the programs, we set a dollar amount cost, per student, and then for the students that are eligible for the Open Door Grant, we use scholarship funds from the Open Door Grant to pay the cost for that. And we right now have, I think, about 70 students that are participating in IET through the Open Door Grant. Now, for next year, the Open Door Grant is um, looking to be available to adult education providers. In 2021, it was only available for the technical colleges or the two-year uh, colleges, but be on the lookout because they might be opening that for adult education. So if the technical college or the two-year school in your area did not apply for open door grants, you might be interested in applying for these. And we've already set up the whole structure in terms of the student application, there has to be a student application. Right now, um, there's a FAFSA requirement that the students have to apply for FAFSA in for the and, next and that's very, year. And that's very important. They have to apply for FAFSA, not necessarily be eligible for FAFSA because we know many of our students sometimes are not. So, but for next year, uh, they're looking to change that ruling, right? They do have to be a Florida residency. So then you have to make sure to complete the Florida residency uh, paperwork and make sure you have your supporting uh, documentation. And again, the programs, the IET programs that can be sponsored or the student scholarships going into programs that either are on the K-12 funding list or on the post-secondary funding list. But for us, I think we've done a little bit here and there. The Open Door Grant has really opened the door for us to sponsor so many more students. This is, this is really, I think, a, a true um, proactive response from the state. The state has heard 
the challenges from adult education and CT colleges about how do we do IET and how do we create and leverage funding for student tuition, for student access. And so this is their way of attempting to be uh, to provide additional resources with a very specific purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as we're coming to the end of our presentation, make sure if you have any questions there. Also, I know there's been a um, handbook that has been uploaded with some information, but keep this in mind. Collaboration is critical for success. And I know that the conversation now has started about regional collaboration. So as you're heading into those discussions in your region, you might want to have conversations around IET. What's going on in your area? Well, how do you need to work together as a region maybe to support some quality IET programs? Especially if you're in a rural area, it might be several of you working together and building one quality IET program. And there's no right or wrong way to do it as long as you're meeting uh, the criteria set forth by the state. That IET program can be in person. It may be hybrid. It may be virtual. It all depends on what is the IET program, what is the need. It might be site-based. So I know in Florida, we have a lot of nursing assisting facilities. You might be able to partner and do a site-based IET. Um, the school districts, they tend to be largest employers many times in the different areas. What are their needs? I know as a result of that, we started a Parapro in conjunction with Blue Board. You want to talk a little bit about that, Ariel? Yeah, so what we started the conversation early with, with, with our school district on identifying what was their current need and probably very similar to across the state, um, just a shortage of teacher or, or aides to support instruction. And what for us, that was something that we said, wait a minute, this is almost too easy because it falls along the similar lines as our adult basic education and GED preparation. Um, so it was a matter of trying to identify how do we leverage this? Now we didn't have the time or the resources to be able to develop a new program. So Bloom Board came in and had that program already developed for us. So with the open door funds, we're able to leverage the resources that Bloom Board has, has already created for us to start providing that pathway or that entry point for our school district to better, for us to better support our school district, putting adult education on a different map than they have ever seen us before. Um, and so we're, it, it, it's really about that collaboration conversation. Um, and also we might, it might even be about reaching beyond our, re, our, our region and so as you come up with questions or if you need, if you have questions beyond this presentation, feel free to reach out to us because as, as we share, we're gaining just as much information. Uh, we're learning just as much as we're sharing from all of you. Mm -hmm. And along those lines, so these individuals that are not only in Parapro, but in some of our um, other IET programs, remember they have to be part of your adult education program. So you need to make sure that you're testing them, whether using CASA's goal or TAVE or whatever your assessment instrument is, and making sure that they meet the criteria to be an adult education student, and then enrolling them. And whatever the funding stream, you need to make sure that you um, meet the criteria for that funding stream. So with Open Door, it is grant funded. So make sure that everything is aligned in terms of keeping uh, individual files for those students for auditing purposes. And then finally, to get a clear understanding of open door in terms of their student investment or last dollar. We've been using the last dollar portion of that um, open door for the students in IET. I forgot to mention that we are also using adult general education funds then to pay the $30 fee on behalf of the student. But everything had to be well laid out. This was after multiple conversations with several individuals from the state of Florida. 
uh, conversations with individuals from Bloomboard regarding the program that they had to offer, and also conversations with partners from throughout the state. I know I reached out to people out in Lightroom Tech in terms of how they did certain things in Orange County and Hillsborough County. And it's through those conversations that I'm learning more and more and then saying, oh, I had not thought about that. We should look into that. Um, we're always available, Ariel and I, if you choose to apply for the Open Door Grant or you're interested in seeing, well, what did your application look like? Please send us an email and we'll be glad to send a copy of what ours look like. And then you can adapt it to meet your needs and what yours is going to look like. We did ours working alongside Indian River and Bloomberg and several others that we got ideas from. So we're, we're not doing this alone, alone. We're learning from our partners from throughout the state of how to do it. And, and, and I think that as we continue to see the opportunities of, the, of, of IET and the resources coming in, we have to continue to think more differently than we ever had before. Right. And Ariel will put in the chat box our email addresses, also our phone numbers. Um, remember, I have a new phone number. In case you want to reach out to us, and we always welcome people. So, as part of your collaboration process, and you're looking for a way to spend some of those funds, come visit us in Naples. It's a great time. Uh, we're not in season, so you can get great hotel rates, and we'll be glad to share everything that we've learned on this journey and that we'll continue to learn because we're not there yet and we'll continue to work to get there. Okay, any other questions out there? No questions? Well, thank you so much. I'm sure that we provided a lot of information. When you leave us, uh, that's probably when the questions are gonna come. Ariel and I, we're always available. And so now we're going to turn it over to June. That was very informative. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just remind you that there is a feedback slide right now. If you could take just a minute to fill it out, that would be wonderful. We'd love to hear from you. I want to remind you that the recorded version, the PowerPoint, and there will be a handout that goes along with this webinar today will be available on the IPTA website within 48 hours. So just go ahead and check back and you will find it there. And, you know, reach out to us. We're always happy to work together because I know that we can accomplish many things if we all work together. I thank you so much for your time today. And Ariel, Yolanda, thank you so much for your expertise. We appreciate you. Thank you.